Well, what we have here is the making of a future extreme restoration. This is what I got in the mail. And unfortunately, through no fault of the seller, because this was actually pretty well packed, but the shipper must have had a field day with it because as good as the packing was, Here's what we have to deal with as far as the keyboard is concerned. It's cracked pretty well throughout, end to end. So we'll see what we can do about restoring this keyboard. We haven't even gotten into what might be wrong with the computer because uh, it wasn't purchased as working, it was purchased as non-working so we'll also see what's up with the computer itself and um and i guess we'll have like i said a pretty extreme restoration here so stay tuned and uh let's see what we can make of this All right, so let's see how we're going to repair this guy. So first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and peel this off here. To... Okay, we'll take care of that double face tape later. Uh, for now, I just want to make this thing as flat as possible. So, let's go ahead and turn this thing around. And let's start taking this thing apart here. You want to make sure you don't lose these little screws and everything. I'm taking this apart. I'm seeing more little pieces. <laughs> going to be quite a restoration here. Oh, there's a bug inside this keyboard. Okay. So these two screws that hold this in are a little bit longer than the four screws in the front. Keep that in mind if you're taking one of these apart. All right, while we have this apart, we'll go ahead and do the necessary cleaning and maybe clean the membrane while we're at it as well. So in order to do that, basically you take the keys out. I think I have another video where I've shown you all this, but you take the keys out by pinching these little tabs here and the keys will pop out. Okay. So we'll get to that. But what's in front of us is this guy here. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this from the back. There's more pieces. We'll start with the bigger pieces first here and get this all kind of glued together and then see what we have left where all these other pieces come into play. You know, it's a huge chunk missing here. So let's, uh, Let's get cracking with that.
And then where we have gaps, like here, we're going to have gaps. We're going to fill it in with Bondo and even this out. So. First, put a little dab of glue here because I can't see the front from the other side. And I'm afraid that if I just go ahead and glue the other side, the back side blindly, um, I might not see that there's a little bit of a step between the two pieces. So, not that we can't deal with it, and we will deal with it with Bondo later, because there will be little tiny gaps where the cracks are, but I want to try to make it as flat as possible. So we'll get like a, a stiff ruler or something, you know, a piece of metal that's really flat and stiff and just press it on the back side when I'm gluing it, or on the front side here when I'm gluing it from the back side. All right. Okay. So my glue of choice is Bob Smith Industries. Um, it's, it's basically, you know, crazy glue. Um, with the, their um, catalyst that makes it dry quick. The table might just be flat. Okay, first thing we're going to do is put a little drop of this super glue here. I'm only going to put a drop just to hold it in place. It's kind of almost like tack welding it just to make sure before we apply more of it that everything is flat the way we want there's still a gap back here oh that's why it's not laying flat got to take these guys out here so those little rubber things have two little tabs they're not rubber it's plastic of some sort got to take these guys out Oops, there's more that I'm feeling. I'm not, there we go. I wasn't feeling it flush. That should, that should harden it. Real quick like. Excess off here. All right. So we're going to have a little bit of sanding to get this perfectly flush on the front, but it's not too bad. So that's the main part, so we'll get the rest of this over here. I 
I know I said earlier I was going to just put a little dab, kind of like tack welding, but it's not really going to matter because we're going to be sanding this down a little bit anyway, so we'll figure it out. A little bit of a step there, but it's not too bad. Okay, let's get this crack here. It goes all the way to here, so... Let's see if I can see it from the back. It's hard to see. I want to strengthen it. So now we have this crack coming here, right across. We got multiple cracks coming here. There's one, there's two, there's three. Okay, we got this one already. So let's work on this guy. We can find it. Yeah. So that crack is right right up here. That crack's right up here, coming this way. I see it from here. So that'll take care of that one. We got another one that's coming just below it. Can't really see it from the back, but I know that it's there because it's in the front. It's like around here somewhere. So what we'll do is we're going to be laying epoxy right above this to strengthen this even further. So we'll just epoxy this whole thing in the middle here. That's what we'll do. That way we're sure to add strength to it. All right, so we've got that laid down pretty well. That takes care of all of this cracking. So now let's see about getting some of these pieces put back. Let's start with this screw piece, which I think is this guy here. Yeah. So this guy is broken into a whole bunch of different pieces. So I'm afraid with this guy, what we're going to do is we're going to have to epoxy this and drill a hole in the epoxy for the screw. Cause I don't think this is going to, I don't think this is going to work here. Pretty sure that's where that goes. So at least it gives us more substance to put the epoxy around. I know it might have seemed like such a waste of time to do that, but the more pieces we can put in there, the more the epoxy we'll have to hold on to. Okay. Let's look at what we have up here now. Okay, that's a simple one. No, it seems like my hand was shaking like crazy, but it's because I'm squeezing that too really, really hard. That liquid didn't want to come out. Okay. I think we got that one. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so let's keep working at it here. Let's see how this guy fits in here somewhere. 
think that goes in like this. Okay, so I kind of cheated and did that little corner that we were messing around with off camera. Um, it was just easier to do. So let's just continue this little journey of a puzzle of ours. Um, this guy here looks like this piece. Yeah. That's what's going to go there, so that's a nice fit too, okay. Okay, so I taped this up so that way we can protect the, the labeling on here. So I'm going to be using this glazing and spot putty. And what I'm going to do is basically just flow it over the cracks so it gets into the cracks itself. And you don't have much time with this stuff, so kind of before it starts to dry, so. Okay, so here we are after our first um, sanding, our first, I guess you can call it Bondo. So this stuff um, sands off really, really easy. I mean, really, it's made to fill um, a lot of the cracks and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's, it's a really nice product to use. It sands off so easy, um, very quickly. Um, I used to use epoxy and it was so hard to sand off. I even use crazy glue with baking soda or yeah, baking soda, you know, um, uh, again, even that's a little hard. That would actually start chipping and stuff. But um, anyways, I don't know the longevity of this, though. I don't know. Is it going to crack a few years down the road? Um, so that's the only thing. But nonetheless, this is what we have. This took all of 20 minutes of sanding. Um, what you see here is this is the actual bare plastic color. So this is R1007, I think it is. Um, once I match it up, I'll, I'll post a link. Um, but it's a gunmetal um, color. Um, this is the original underneath the plastic. Um, this is very, very smooth. So these lines, that's where the Bondo comes in. It fills in all the cracks and then you just sand this down really nice this is really smooth as well it could use a little bit more you can see there it's you know the bondo's cracking because of the um th this thing is still a little loose i haven't reinforced the back yet so we'll fill that up right now with a little bit more um bondo and do another um swipe at it but all the other cracks are perfectly filled and very nice and smooth I went over it with a medium coarse sandpaper, um, um, kind of like an emery cloth type of paper. Um, and then when I'm finished, I'll go over it with a fine, um, uh, the fine coarse um, paper. So the only thing I have left here is we'll fill out um, this one more time, do a second pass at the Bondo on the little tiny imperfections. Um, all of this stuff that you see is smooth. Um, I got to fill in, I missed the crack right here. So we'll do that, sand it down, um, use the fine sandpaper and come back and give you another update on this. What we'll do after the fine sandpaper to take away all the um, scratches that the medium paper left behind is then we're gonna primer it in gray. And the primer in gray is a fillable primer. So it'll fill in the little tiny things, whatever's left, and then we'll wet sand it. 
And then once that's done, um, we may need another coat of primer. We'll see how that goes, but that primer will show all of the imperfections. Um, you can kind of feel and you can eyeball, you know, on this smooth, but the primer doesn't hide anything. So um, that's what the plan of action is. And then after we're done priming and wet sanding, it should be really smooth to the touch. By that time, our paint will get here. Our final coat of paint will get here. And then um, we'll, you know, we're almost to the finish line. So there you go. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's a real quick update on where we're at with this. Um, basically, I've got, uh, I've got this all sanded down. I used medium emery cloth, and then I used a, a fine emery cloth. Everything is really smooth. You can't feel any of the cracks, so that's promising. So the next step is we're going to primer it. I'm going to use Tamiya. Um, gray primer. The reason I use Tamiya is because that primer goes on very, very thin and very smooth and it dries very, very fast. Um, so that's, um, that's next in line. But in the meantime, I'm going to make another video on how to pack an SX-64 for shipping because I don't know how many SX-64 keyboards um, have to uh, basically take one for the team. This one, you saw how damaged it was. Well, um, here's some pictures of the previous one that uh, came damaged that, um, that I'm actually touching up along with this one. I fixed the other one, but there was a little few defects in it that I'm going to take care of at the same time we do this one. But I just received another SX-64. And here you go. We have another repair. Not only did that come cracked, but here are the remnants of this keyboard. No sooner had we started repairing that one that now we have a new one. Now this one's not as bad as this one that we're repairing now, but nonetheless, here we go again. Um, unbelievable that, you know, these things come damaged because they're just not packed very well. The keyboards are very fragile and they're just left to bounce around or um, not enough packaged material um, to where they sit against, you know, um, the walls of the boxes. I mean, there's, it's just, it's just disastrous. I, I just can't put into words. Uh, anyways, so here we have another keyboard, another keyboard to repair. So we might as well start that one and do it at the same time. So we'll figure out where all these pieces come from and, uh, yeah, go from there. So I'll give you another update once I get this all primed and everything. Um, and heck, I might as well throw that one in the video as well, since I'm going to be painting everything at the same time. So stay tuned. My goodness. For God's sakes. We'll be back. Okay, here's a quick little update for you. We got this primed. You can see, or primered. <laughs> you can see there's no cracks visible anywhere. Um, so I must have done a pretty good job of sanding. Everything looks really nice and smooth and where it's supposed to be. So what I'm going to do now is wet sand it with 3200 grit sandpaper to get it nice and smooth and put a layer of the uh, top coat. I think it's um, R007 or RL007. I'll leave the code in the link. Um, so anyways, that's what we're gonna do next. No, one note, um, you want to mask these off here I don't have it in the picture, but I'm going to before I paint. You'll want to mask those off because if you paint in there, um, it'll thicken up the walls. And remember, you have the little slider that, uh, that goes in there that slides up and down the little locks. And if it gets skunked up with paint, one, you're going to have a hard time getting the little plastic protector piece in here. 
and the other is you're going to have a hard time with the, the, the little latch sliding up and down. So um, to prevent uh, sanding or grinding after the fact, I mask that off and that way I get left with a real nice smooth um, area for the latch to slide up and down. So I'll give you another update once we get the layer of coat on here. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. Okay, so I think we're done with uh, both keyboards. I'll go over the process that I use to paint these things. This one required the most amount of work. The other one is the second one that I received that was pretty messed up on the corners. But anyways, let's go ahead and take um, the tape off. I'm just scoring this just a little so I don't peel any of the paint with me when I tear this off. This isn't 100% perfect, but it's a lot better than not having a keyboard at all. And I'm sure you experts out there can probably do a heck of a lot better job than I did, but I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out considering the circumstances. Okay, a little bit of tape that I'll clean up here afterwards a little bit more than what you see now. Okay, so I'll spend a little more time just cleaning up just a few little tiny minor little things. My OCD kicks in and I see this stuff and you just want every little edge to be perfect. So anyways. There you go, that's one. And then we taped off the back side here um, because this is where these little things slide. And if you put a primer and then paint it and everything, it adds a little bit of layer of paint and then it keeps the uh, slider from sliding up and down. So um, those will be covered up. You know with these guys here so anyways um, then what we do here is we put some double face tape on there so let me get that real quick here and so this is the piece that we're going to put back in place so, in order to conserve tape, I just kind of, I'm going to cut it in the middle here. So, okay. So what was here before was double face tape underneath as well when we took this out. So no different than before. So there we go. Now that's looking like it should. So let's do the other one here. We'll do this the same way. I'll clean some of the roughness off a little later so I don't bore you with that.
All right. So there is that one. So. So let's get the keyboard back together here. Oh, this one's starting to pop up a little bit here. There we go. Okay. So first things first. I am not going to reinforce it with epoxy. I think for this one here, um, the cracks were thin enough to where the super glue um, pretty much took care of them. So. These are the latches. So interestingly enough, before we put the latch back on, there's the piece, this piece here that goes in like so. So the interesting thing about this is that um, these came in two flavors. These are plastic, but they also came in rubber. So um, I have some keyboards that they're rubber and others, this is a plastic, hard plastic kind of It'll cheapen their way out of this a little bit. Okay, and they clip on on each side here. And be careful with the tabs. The rubber ones are more forgiving, but these are hard plastic. The tabs can snap off. And then you'd have to end up gluing it in place, which kind of sucks. These can only go back one way because they have little tiny holes that match up with the little, these little things that stick out at the top, so. And be careful not to cross thread these things. You will snap the plastic if they're too tight. So give it a turn counterclockwisely here at click and then you should be able to catch the threads that were there. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Now the keyboard. So I had to repair this where the keyboard um, DB25 connector goes in needed to be um, repaired so i'm afraid of driving these screws for these are very long i'm afraid of driving it in and cracking it again so i'm gonna i think get a smaller screw that doesn't go down as deep because this is a little scary so Let's do that. This looked like a three millimeter screw, just so you know. So I have a three millimeter threaded screw here. And normally I would take the keyboard apart right now and uh, clean it up and replace the membrane. But this keyboard, I tested it ahead of time and every single key works flawlessly. So I'm thinking it should be okay. So let me turn this thing around so you can see what I'm doing here. I forgot that the connector has to go underneath this. There we go. Again, I don't want to cross thread, so I want to make sure I catch the, the thread that was already there before. If it starts going in too tight, oop, I can hear it cracking. I don't want to do that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and 
I'm going to go ahead and reinforce that other one with uh, with super glue as well. I just don't trust the brittleness of these things. So I'll be right back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to this other one here that I did with this one is I'm going to put super glue around it and put um, um, accelerator on it so it dries up real quick like so I'll be right back. Okay, so I super glued a nice glob of super glue around this and then use the accelerator for it to dry up. So I'm also going to use smaller, just a little bit smaller length screws than the originals because I just didn't feel the originals grabbing onto the same thread. So I don't know what must have happened. Um, Hear cracking and that just makes me really nervous the worst case scenario is I'll have to grind those things off and put new standoffs in there but I'm hoping I don't need to do that just making sure Thing is cracked, so that looks good. All right, so the keyboard has these little recesses here at the top. Don't forget to put it in the recess because if you don't, it's not going to go back together very well. Okay, that feels good and sturdy. Okay, you don't want to over tighten. All right. So this then just uh, snaps back into place. Um, I usually put the front, it's got the longer tabs, put the front in and then the top, which are smaller, will just snap back into place. Opposite of how we took it apart. You can hear it snapping. Okay. So where we made the repair, boom, awesome. All right. Okay, so let's go over the paint. So. The first thing I do is obviously you already seen, I put the Bondo, I sand it so everything's smooth. I then primer it. I use Tamiya primer because it's very thin. Um, it's for RC hard bodies. Um, I did one keyboard in white, one keyboard in gray. Um, with the primer, the outcome of the colors didn't matter. Um, so I tend to use gray more than I use white. Um, especially on this, because if something gets nicked a little bit, the gray undercoat will kind of hide the, a little imperfection. So anyways, um, I wet sanded the gray primer with 3200 grit. You don't have to go that fine, but I did um, just so it came out nice and smooth. So after that primer, and you saw that, you saw what it, that looked like um, earlier. After that, we get to the paint. Now you can get this paint. It's uh, from Crosslink Paints, um, it's in the US. Um, they will make the aerosol can um, for you, um, the spray can. Um, it's RAL9007 gray aluminum. I use semi-gloss because it looked like the original keyboard was semi-gloss, so I went with semi-gloss. I didn't use glossy, but they also have it in gloss. Um, the website link is www.crosslinkpaints.com, RAL9007. That's, um, that's the aluminum, um, the gray aluminum that I used. Now, about this paint, it's an acrylic enamel. Um, 
be real careful. You have to have consistency when you're spraying the paint. Start beyond the case and spray consistently all the way beyond the case again. And you have to have an even flow and you have to keep about six inches from it. If you even pause just a little bit, you know, like I just did right there, see how I just paused just a little bit, there will be a color shift. So this paint is really, really that sensitive. It also takes a long time to dry. The Tamiya primer takes about 10 minutes to dry. Um, this, I left it for two days just to make sure that it dries, um, that it dries or that it hardened um, well enough for me to do my next step, which you don't really need to do. I put two coats of this on. I light mist coat at first and then the harder coat afterwards. Um, I put two coats of this on and that typically might just be enough protection, you know, because the paint is kind of hard, but I take it a little one step further. Um, I use I use a lot of Duplicolor in the hard body RCs that I paint. Um, so I have a lot of Duplicolor product. Um, and one of the things that I finish them off with is the Duplicolor clear coat finish. So that's what I did here. I just sprayed one coat of this clear coat finish on there. Again, be consistent um, because you don't want to mess up all the good work you just did because you didn't lay the clear coat on well. So it's a risk that you take if you're not proficient at um, laying it down. <laughs> Um, you may want to consider that, but anyways, so I put a coat of clear coat on there just to protect it a little further. So this is what we ended up with. Um, let me get these in the picture here a little bit. Um, so let's, uh, let's see what this looks like, um, with, uh, compared to a, a keyboard, um, a stock keyboard, uh, Fast as I put those in the picture, I'm taking it right back out. So this is a stock keyboard right here. So very little difference. The differences come out like in the light a little bit, you know, because of the reflection of the light when you move these things around. But if I keep them equal, looks the same. So really happy with how it came out, you know, Basically, you know, looks looks like just a regular keyboard and you saw the mess that it was, you know, earlier. The other keyboard's going to end up, you know, the same way. Um, so, yeah. So I hope that that shows you, you know, the ease of restoration that, uh, well, the ease, I mean, you know, it's relative, right? But keyboards get damaged a lot in shipping. Um, and I'm almost tempted to make a video like, you know, look, I, a tip, if you're going to, if you're going to ship an SX-64, the weight of the SX-64, um, is, is it pretty, it's pretty hefty. If you're going to ship, spend the extra time and money to get a bigger box to make sure it's bubble wrapped. I normally put the handle up when I ship in the box, I put the handle up. So that adds a layer of air and protection between the handle and the keyboard. And then inside, underneath the handle, I wrap the SX64 in three layers of bubble wrap this way, and then I wrap another two or three layers this way. So it's cross-layered, and then I get a box big enough to lay that whole thing in. Yes, it takes more bubble wrap. Yes, it takes a bigger box. Yes, it's going to cost more to ship, but you won't get the mess that I end up getting with these keyboards being damaged because they leave the handle down in order to get a smaller box. They think foam, you know, uh, and, and I'm not disparaging the shippers. I mean, they, this, this folks don't, may not realize, but they use foam and the foam compresses a great deal and it doesn't really protect the case. As soon as that gets tossed around and, you know, with the handle down, the foam is exposing the keyboard actually because that foam is going to compress and the keyboard is still going to get nailed. So my advice, if you ship these things, make sure you keep the handle up to protect the keyboard and wrap the whole thing, you know, in bubble wrap, you know, at least minimum two layers, um, not the small, tiny bubble, the thick bubble wrap. Um, and, and just pat it as much as you can.
trust me, the cost of a bigger box with more protection inside will outweigh a buyer telling you they got it damaged and then you being stuck with either getting the return back or taking a really good amount of money off of what you just sold this for. So here's my ranting and raving advice. So hope this uh, got you something, you know, you know, new as far as, you know, maybe a tip or two. And uh, yeah, I think that'll wrap it up. So like I always say, as usual, you know it, um, live for today. You only live once. Enjoy the heck out of it and peace out.